Hey guys, Halfway Dead here with a new tutorial series for Buckus Mod. The controller input lag video is not quite done yet, but I promise it will be out next week. If you don't know what Buckus Mod is, it's a third party mod that adds a lot of features to training as well as some quality of life features to the game in general. I've talked about it multiple times in the past in my videos. It's unfortunately only available for Windows and no other platforms. If you are a Windows user though, I highly recommend downloading it, as it adds a lot of features that you don't want to miss out on. And I'm going to go all over all of these features in the upcoming episodes of this tutorial series. I haven't planned when I'm going to release new videos for this series, as I obviously want to prioritize rocket science, but whenever I find some time in between, I'm going to release new videos for this mod and explain some new features. This first episode is going to mainly focus on installation and some very basic features. Alright, let's get started. First you want to head over to buckersmod.com. I'm going to put that in the description of course. And then you're just gonna have to click download now. You're gonna get to this page and click here to download. This should download the buckersmod injector in a zip file. And once you have that downloaded, you can show it in the folder. I'm gonna go ahead and unpack this by opening it. If you don't have WinRAR installed, you can just double click it and get to this view. Or you can just unpack it with WinRAR if you know how to do that. Then you just wanna click on extract all right here. Just leave default options, extract. And it's gonna go here, right here with this folder. And now you have the Buckus Mod injector. I currently have this in my download folder or download drive and uh, you can put this anywhere you want. It's just uh, an executable file and that is what you want to use to start Buckus Mod. I'm gonna just leave it here for now and double click on it to start it. And as you can see, Windows protected my PC. It's recommending me not to run it, but I'm gonna run it anyway because I trust Buckus and this um, launcher actually is open source. So if you go right here, it's on GitHub and it doesn't have a virus. I am pretty sure of that. As you can see right here, it didn't find the Rocket League executable by itself and it's showing me the path where it should be. I'm not sure why it doesn't find it by, uh, by itself for me because I have Rocket League installed in the default directory which uh, I'm going to show you right here. It's just in on the C drive, program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, common Rocket League, binaries, Win32, and there is the Rocket League X. If you don't have it in the default directory, then you should know that yourself and just navigate there and click on the Rocket League X and open. Now it asks me to download the newest update and I'm going to click yes, of course. It is already done with all that, so the installation is basically complete. And I can now look in the Buckus Mod folder by clicking on File, Open Buckus Mod folder, and it navigates me right there. This is basically just the Rocket League folder where we just selected the executable. And in here is the Buckus Mod folder, but you're not gonna need that unless you uh, need troubleshooting. And if somehow anything in this step didn't work, then skip to the end of the video because I'm going to do the troubleshooting all at the end. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna put timestamps in the description and everything. So assuming that everything worked fine, there are a lot of options here, but most of them you're only gonna need for troubleshooting. But there are three features that are important, even if you don't run into any issues. And that is just right here under settings. There's run on startup. This basically just tells Windows to start this launcher whenever uh, Windows starts. And that just means that this is always gonna be active and you will always have Backus mod when you launch Rocket League. Then there's height when minimized, which is basically just saying that if I press the minimize button right here, you can see Backus mod vanishes in the taskbar and you can only find it down here in the icons. And a click right there will already open it again. If I disable this, then it's gonna stay right here in the task where it's just a matter of preference. And the other up last option I want to talk about is minimize on start. 
This is basically for when I, I can just show this. I'm gonna click this option and close down Bacchus Mod Injector. And if I start it now, you can see it seems like nothing happens because it already starts minimized right here. It's open now, that's just a matter of preference too. If you don't want to worry about Bacchus Mod, you can just leave it on all these settings and it should start with Windows, should start minimized and you're never gonna notice it. It's just gonna start with Rocket League. All right, this is about everything you need to know about installing Bacchus Mod. Now you can just launch Rocket League and it's already gonna be working. So I'm gonna do that right here, start Rocket League and you can see the injector is already injecting the DLL and it's already injected before my window even opened. You might not see that, but it's uh, no problem. Um, once Rocket League is open, you can tab out and check if it shows injected. And if it doesn't, once again, I'm gonna refer you to the end of the video where I'm gonna do the troubleshooting. So I'm gonna assume here that it worked fine for you. If that worked fine for you, then I want you to go into the game and press F2. F2 is gonna open up the Bacchus Mod GUI. Now, it could be the case that, once again, it says injected right here, but this still doesn't open. And that would be, once again, where I refer you to the end of troubleshooting. I'm gonna assume that everything is working for now. And the very first thing I want you to do is to go to the miscellaneous tab and select the all off config right here. Because by default, Bacchus Mod comes enabled with a lot of features and I had some friends before who were confused by some of the features and ended up deinstalling the mod again because they couldn't figure out how to turn them off or which feature they actually had to turn off because there are so many of them. So if you don't want to use the defaults, which I recommend because this guide is going to assume that you don't use default features, then you're gonna want to select the all off config here and press the execute button. So this already worked. I know that because otherwise this field wouldn't be empty now. So we have now set Bacchus Mod to turn all features off basically, which means if you now play Rocket League, it's gonna be the same as if you didn't have Bacchus Mod installed, which is also of course pointless, but now you could go through all these settings by yourself and read through them and uh, figure out which one you want to turn on and which one you don't want to turn on. And I'm obviously gonna add a lot of videos to this tutorial series in the future um, to explain all of these features and how you can turn them on. Now, despite me saying that all features are turned off, that is actually a small lie because there's something that I left on with this configuration. And you can see that if you go into free play or custom training because by default, of course, the D-pad slash 1234 on the keyboard are used for quick chat in a normal game. And in free play, of course, you can't use quick chat because there's no one else there. So what Bacchus Mod does is actually rebind those four keys to do something useful. And for the default bindings, D-pad down slash 1 on the keyboard is bound to send you a redirect. This is completely dynamically generated. So if I press, play the ball right there, it's gonna come right here if I wanted to redirect. And depending on the situation, it's gonna give me a different redirect and I have to try and score this. This is a little different from a redirect training pack in the way that, uh, first of all, you can literally go anywhere and it's gonna throw you a redirect completely dynamically, but also these redirects are not always gonna be perfect passes. Sometimes it's gonna be impossible or hard to score, but it's actually quite useful to use this because you have to learn how to uh, receive a pass in the midfield basically without being able to shoot it directly at the net sometimes. And it's a lot more like real gameplay in that sense. All right, I'm not gonna go into detail right here, you can test this out yourself, of course, and uh, play around with it. I'll just go to the second binding, and that is left on the D-pad or two on the keyboard. And this actually throws a rebound onto the backboard. And now, of course, you can set yourself up for rebound in free play. But the advantage of this one is that you can have the ball shoot from a completely different angle than the angle you're coming from. So if you're on standing on the right and the rebound is coming from the left then you have to cross and that's a lot different than setting yourself up for a rebound. 
Then the third binding or d-pad right is a row two command. And this is just gonna spawn the ball right in front of you, you and make a row towards you. And this is useful for popping the ball, doing a bounce dribble or um, starting a dribble, really anything you can think of. And this is just another thing that you can use to get into situations that you don't really have too much in free play because usually you have the ball rolling away from you and not towards you in free play. Last but not least, the fourth binding or up on the D-pad is just gonna teleport the ball on your car and that's just nice for starting out dribbles or if you just want to teleport the ball because it's all across the map then you can get it right back and it's just way faster than having to reset the ball and drive there. So those are the four bindings that you have by default in free play and of course you can change those but that's a topic for a future episode. These features are of course useless in custom training which is why in custom training these bindings are used differently. And what I mean by this is that you can actually skip shots back and forth in custom training and as you would expect on the d-pad that is just left and right to skip forwards and backwards and on the keyboards is it is two and three two to skip back and three to skip forward so this is obviously just a really great quality of life feature that i've seen requested many many times online and it allows you to just get to any shot in a training pack at will to train that shot in specific but there are two more bindings and they are also very useful because as a matter of fact you can mirror a shot. This is the same shot number four and I can change the way it's mirrored and I do that by pressing one or d-pad down. And yeah it's just gonna do exactly what I just said and you can practice it on both sides which helps because a lot of training packs will only have shots a certain shot at least on one side not all shots on one side and it's just good to train any shot on any side because there's really no reason to be better at one side and then another and the last binding is also pretty useful it just generates a random shot so if I press defed up or 4 on the keyboard as you can see it will just get any random shot from the training pack and that just allows you to train in a random order and you don't know which shot is coming until you see it, of course. Alright, those are all the features I wanted to cover in this episode. As I said, not much, just the installation and basics. All features that are permanently enabled are disabled currently because of the config. And you can just go through the GUI with F2 and try out a lot of these features. Turn them on one by one and see what you like and otherwise you can wait until I release new videos. Alright, for the troubleshooting section. If the installation of the mod fails then you can try clicking reinstall on the file. You can also try reselecting the Buckus mod folder. This would be right here what I already showed earlier. If you go to the Rocket League exit that's C program files steam steam apps common rocket league binaries win32 rocket league.exe and then reinstall and you can also try running this um, injector in administrator mode and then reinstalling usually this shouldn't be necessary but if you're having an issue then try it out for further issues i'm gonna use this help section right here and troubleshooting. This wiki page shows a bunch of solutions to issues that pop up quite often for some people. So if you were to start Rocket League and then the injector tries to inject and Rocket League instantly fails, then you want to try all of these solutions before you ask any questions anywhere because a lot of times these solutions will already fix any issue that you have. And the first of them is that you make sure that Rocket League doesn't have any launch options. You can check that right here in Steam. 
right click on Rocket League properties and then right here there are launch options. I actually am using a launch option because for me it seems to work fine but uh, I definitely know that uh, no movie doesn't work fine for me and instantly crashes the game in combination with Bacchus mod. Either way, even if you have allow background audio and this crashes for you, try removing that if it doesn't work for you. Another solution offered right here is to try and verify the game files. That's also something that can be done in Steam. Right click on Rocket League, properties, then local files and verify the integrity of the game files. Just click on that and it will do its thing by itself and uh, at some point it's going to be finished and then you can try starting Rocket League again with Bacchus mod and hopefully it's not going to crash. If it still crashes, you can go back and um, run the injector as admin as I already suggested for the if the installation fails and select file reinstall. So that would be right here. Last but not least, Bugs Mod is apparently not compatible with Ninja Ripper, so if you're using that, then you're gonna have to just uh, remove that from the directory while using Bugs Mod. Something that also happens quite a bit is that the mod says that it is injected. So if I start Rocket League right now, right now it's obviously uninjected because it's not running. Now it's injecting and now it's injected. And because of that, I can now open the user interface in Rocket League or I can go into free play and give myself a redirect and if that wasn't actually working if it says injected right here and I can even do this check injection thing injection successful if this all says it's good but it's not actually working in the game then there's usually the issue that you don't have this installed vcredist.x86 you can just download it from Microsoft right here. Select language, English is, English is fine. Make sure you download the x86 version, not the x64 version. version. And that's an executable, so just install that. This is actually required to run the mod, but a lot of people will already have it installed, so you're not gonna have to do this step. But yeah, if you don't have it installed, you have to have this installed. Then it also offers the option to increase the injection timeout setting. You can do that right here in settings and just increase that by a bit. You can try that. And if you're using any mod like Alpha Console or any other modification with Bacchus Mod at the same time, first disable all other mods and make sure that Bacchus Mod runs fine by itself. If that's not the case, then you know that the other mods aren't the fault of that. If Bacchus Mod runs fine on its own, then you should be able to launch Alpha Console after Bacchus Mod and not run into any issues. There is also the modification Reshade that a lot of people are using. And if you do that, you can't actually use the user interface. So this won't open, but you can still redirect in Freeplay, for example, with the default bindings. So that part should still be working and otherwise you can disable reshade and enable it later when you actually need it to make a montage or something. Last but certainly not least, if you ran into any issues that I didn't cover here, then make sure to head over to the Bacchus Mod Discord, which is right here. And yeah, I'm already in there of course, so I can show you right here, you're gonna be in the general chat. And if you can't start the mod, if it's any, if you have any issues with that in specific, then post it in the help channel. There are multiple people helping there and Bacchus is going to read it there. In my comments, it's not going to be as great because there are just not going to be as many people reading it. And I also only read my comments about once every week. So you might have to wait for a really long time for a response there. That about covers everything I wanted to say about the mod in this video. Make sure to follow me and Bacchus on Twitter to get any updates on new features or new tutorials.